Hello and welcome back to another episode of Geek with Glasses. Today's video should be pretty obvious to you. We are going to take a look at OSX Mavericks. So WWDC's keynote occurred on Monday and amongst iOS 7, the new Mac Pro, and a bunch of other cool stuff, the next generation of desktop operating system OSX 10.9 Mavericks uh, was announced. The, <clears throat> the announcement that they were going away from big cat names and leaning towards inspirational locations in California was made and Mavericks was their first choice. Um, Mavericks is a, uh, a surf spot off of the central coast there in California. It's actually not very far from the Apple headquarters. Basically you just go over the uh, Los Gatos Mountains, the Santa Cruz Mountains, and the Mavericks are, are relatively close. So I can understand why they chose that. But I'm looking forward to seeing what they plan on naming uh, all the future operating systems. Uh, so right now we have Mavericks. Um, in this video I want to take a look at uh, some of the top features that were announced and demonstrated at WWDC. I'm going to start off by actually showing you the website because there's two features here that I can't actually demo um, on the uh, on the screencast here. And the first one, I can't demo iBooks just because iBooks is not yet available in the beta build. The app is not available on the App Store and it is not inherent to the OS. So uh, we're going to just talk about it here while looking at the website. <clears throat> I th uh, personally, I think iBooks coming to the desktop OS is it's going to be a really cool feature, especially for students studying with iBooks. You know, if you watch the keynote um, from WWDC, you can go back and watch it now on the Apple website. They showed how you're going to be able to have the interactive textbooks, you know, on your desktop or your laptop, as opposed to a, a touch device like your iPhone or your iPad or your iPod. Um, I think this is going to be really awesome for students getting their curriculum and getting their textbooks on the computer, being able to, as you can see in the picture here, take notes, highlight things, append information, and uh, study with. I think it's going to be a very cool new capability, um, plus obviously being able to read all your books and, and synchronize um, directly from your laptop um, or desktop uh, operating system is going to be another nice feature. So uh, I can't show you that one. We have to talk about it. And the other one that I can't show you um, because of the screencast is down here in multiple monitors. And I actually do have a secondary monitor. I've got a 24-inch monitor sitting to the right of the main monitor that you're actually looking at. And they saw they finally solved the biggest problem with uh, Mountain Lion, which is full screen apps. So if you have Mountain Lion, you have multiple monitors, you know that if you go to watch a video full screen or you go to edit a document full screen, uh, whichever screen you're viewing on, it, you can you know consume your content or edit your content, but the secondary monitor becomes useless. It, it grays it out and you have no capability to manage um, anything on that second screen. They've done away with that problem. We have full multiple display uh, capabilities where if I go full screen on this monitor, which I can do with my browser here, I can go full screen and my monitor to the right is not being affected. I could open up a new web browser over here, my finder bar uh, along the top, this bar shoots over to that secondary monitor as well as my actual uh, launch bar can move over to that monitor and I can have full functionality and not actually lose it. Obviously we have a few other cool features with multiple uh, displays. I do have a Apple TV out on my entertainment center in the living room which I have plugged into a 55 inch um, LED TV which is awesome now because technically I can turn that into a third monitor. So if I were to unplug my laptop, take it out to the living room, I can use my laptop as one display and my big TV as a secondary display. So those are a couple of things that uh, I can't actually show you that I wanted to uh, you know talk about from the website but uh, now let's get into the main features that I can actually show you. I've got Mavericks installed here on my MacBook Pro and just for reference I'm running a 2.2 gigahertz um, i7 it's a MacBook Pro from 2011 unibody and I've got 8 gigs of RAM and the most important stat about the laptop is I'm currently running Mavericks on an external hard drive so I installed Mavericks in, on an external USB drive and uh, did a targeted boot and I'm running everything off that USB drive and I'm actually very very pleased with the performance the operating system has been optimized so well that it even runs really really good when it's doing all of its reading and writing through the USB port um, but anyways so beyond that let's take a look so uh, one of the things they mentioned is the new uh, Safari so we now have Safari 7 um, that we're gonna get with Mavericks as you can see we're running Safari 7 here and some of the cool 
new features of Safari 7 is, uh, you know, one of the main new features of Safari 7 is its new sidebar. So let's come down here and show sidebar. So uh, we're going to open up a, a new tab and we'll have the sidebar going. So we now have the new top sites view. So if we didn't have the sidebar view uh, displayed right now, we would see all of our, you know, top sites. We have a new view. We can move them around. It's just like the old one. It's just not got that three-dimensional look. It's just a little bit more flat, as you will. That's uh, what Apple has been liking to use the term flat. That. So if we open the sidebar back up, I now have my bookmarks available to me. I can still put my bookmark bar up just like before, but I have my bookmarks available to me. I can search through my bookmarks um, uh, to find specific content and uh, access them that way. I also have a reading list pane. So if I have websites that I've created tags that I want to go back and read these websites um, or read these articles on a specific website, I can have a read list um, shown here and then I can just you know click on that um, specific read list and it'll jump me to that that part or that tag that I've listed as I want to um, um, go back and read this site so it's kind of a cool feature really quick way to aggregate all of the information you know a lot of people nowadays what you do is you have tabs right you got 15 or 20 tabs and you've got you know your you know I know like my wife she's she's sitting here and she's looking at Pinterest and she's looking at a sewing website and she's looking at a mommy board and she's got her Facebook open well now what she can actually do is have those in a reading list as opposed to having multiple tabs open um, every time you open a tab you use resources on your system and having the reading list is just easily to just jump back and forth between those different sites in a single tab um, the other next uh, feature with the sidebar is shared links. So I have my, my MacBook here con con uh, configured with my Twitter account. As you can see, I have my Twitter feed here. So um, anytime somebody posts a link in their Twitter feed, it'll show up in your shared link. So Adam Sessler, you know, Revision 3 gaming guy, he's talking about a gameplay demo of Batman Arkham Origins. Right here's a YouTube. Click the YouTube link takes me to the YouTube video. I currently don't have Flash installed, unfortunately. Um, and it also shows me the source up at the top of the page. So I can retweet this if I wanted to. Retreat? <laughs> I could retweet this if I wanted to. Um, or I can come down here and uh, add a site. Uh, one of my favorite musicians, he's got a link. I can click it. takes the article that uh, at a site has posted. So really quick way if you want to, uh, you know, go to your Twitter um, accounts and, and, and view what they're posting up there for you so you can configure your operating system with lots of different social networking sites. So those are a couple of the, the features with Safari. Let's get that out of the way and move on to the next cool new feature which is maps. So uh, we, we now have the same mapping engine and interface that you've gotten used to with your iPads um, and your iPhone and your iPod whether you love it or whether you hate it. Um, you know, I, I like it. I wish it had the uh, public transportation information that Google Maps has. But um, other than that, I, I, I've been using it since I've got my iPhone 5, and I actually have not had any many many problems. You know, during my travels with getting directions and being told to go somewhere that doesn't exist. I just want that public transit information. But now we have that on our desktop and you're like okay well why do you want that on your desktop well I can see one really big benefit so let's say I'm I'm gonna go on vacation right let's say I'm gonna drive to New York City um, and I want to plan my trip and I don't want to do it while I'm driving on my phone but I want to plan my trip out and plan stops along the way and plan stops at a restaurant or, or whatever and then I just want to you know schedule day two I'm gonna make a drive out to Long Island or I'm gonna drive up to uh, Connecticut what I can do is I can come in here and I can create directions um, let's just go ahead and say we're going to end in New York City. Um, I can create these directional paths and uh, send these to my phone, right? So I can see the different routes. If I take this route, it's 5 hours and 42 minutes. If I take this route, it's 5 hours and 41 minutes. I can move the route around. Um, and then what I can do is I can share this out. I could, um, <coughs> excuse me, I could send this to uh, via an email or message or an airdrop, Twitter, Facebook. I can add bookmarks. And then there's another feature to be able to send this directly to your iPhone. I can't figure out how to get that to work yet. Um, I'll keep working on that. But you could send this map directly to your iPhone. So you get in the car, get in the car, uh, get on the road, and all of your driving directions are there. And you can have all of your waypoints and all of your stop points along the way before you actually get in the car and go driving. So I think that's actually a pretty cool feature. Um, some of the other features, so let's say I get to my destination, I'm in New York, I zoom into New York, let's go ahead and get rid of these uh, driving directions here, get rid of that, and so I'm in New York, and let's say I'm hanging out at Washington Park, 
and uh, I'm having a cup of uh, coffee from my personal favorite coffee place which is right next to the peanut butter shop right here it's called third rail coffee but I want to go get some lunch so I'm, I'm kicking back and I'm sitting in New York City and I want to go get some lunch so I come up here and I want some pizza so if I'm in New York City I gotta have pizza right so I type in pizza and it immediately will tag all of the pizza places just like you have on your mobile device so I can see this one's not too far from Washington let's see what it is it's half pint I want to get a little more info it goes out to Yelp just like your mobile device does and then I can say give me directions and I want to walk obviously it's set to current location right now but um, I would be able to get walking directions to go to that pizza joint um, <clears throat> and then we've got the same feature that you have on your iOS device. We've got the, you know, the hybrid, I'm um, not the hybrid, but the satellite view and the 3D flyover. So I can, can tilt this down just like I can do on my iPad. Let's go full screen. This will probably look really cool full screen. Go up here and just like Google Earth, only it's the Apple Maps version. I can do all of my flyovers and take a look at the city. So we've got that same capability. You can see the Freedom Tower here. This isn't very current because they've already put the actual spire up but there you go there you, there you have the new mapping application let's go ahead and close that out let's take a look at the other feature that I can show you and that's the new calendar which is pretty sweet um, it's got that flat design that Apple's been talking about personally I think flat is kind of a stupid term for it I think minimalistic is a little bit better because it's definitely not flat um, specifically iOS with all of its new layers and we're gonna do another video uh, very soon and talk about iOS I've got that up and running on my iPhone 5 so stay tuned for that so we've got our day views we got our week view monthly view and yearly view let's go back to our monthly view and the cool part is now that we have that apps tool built in in the app uh, I'm sorry the maps application built into the operating system we can get some really cool integration with my calendar. So let's say I'm going to have lunch um, at uh, 2 p.m. tomorrow. And I'm going to go down to this little uh, local joint here where I live called Foodie. Really good place. You'll notice I type in the name and I start getting map information. So this is coming directly from the maps app that we just talked about. <laughs> Excuse me. So if I click on the Foodie, I get the address. I get the time and I get a little map so if I want to see exactly where I'm going I can click on it and I can see that directly on the map and at this point in time if I wanted to get directions to there I could get that and I could send this to my phone just like we talked about a few minutes ago and the other cool part is I can actually add travel time in here so if you're um, if you've got a long so here we go if uh, from work it's 22 hours I don't know why it says 22 hours but let's say I know it's a 15 minute drive what happens is when I add that it'll actually block out on my calendar the actual time that it takes for me to get there on top of the calendar time and it'll actually integrate if you have traffic turned on with the map and in integration of traffic information it'll integrate that based on the traffic flow so let's say I'm driving into DC for lunch and I and traffic's bad it's gonna take me an hour and 45 minutes to get there it'll map that out on my calendar letting people know that I'm gonna be driving for an hour and 45 minutes and then I have a two o'clock to three o'clock luncheon in DC so some of these new integrated uh, features are actually pretty cool make day-to-day -day life a little bit easier um, I think Apple's definitely doing some cool stuff with the operating system um, let's take a look at the notification center so the new um, there's a new feature in the um, in the uh, system preference panel called internet accounts and I'm not going to click in here because it's got a bunch of my personal stuff that I uh, configured to to try this all out but within here you can configure Gmail accounts just like you could before but you can also configure AOL Flickr LinkedIn Facebook um, what was the other site there was a couple of the other social networking sites and you can configure that within this specific um, interface in the system preference and now your notification center has all of the notifications for all of those apps embedded into it so you can see I sent a friend request on Facebook to a buddy of mine he accepted it it shows up in my notification so I can close that out the new notification center also gives me the capability of sending iMessages directly from the notification center so if I have iCloud configured I can send messages I can send tweet updates and I can uh, post directly to Facebook directly from the notification center so they're they're doing a really good job Apple is is really doing a good job at uh, closing the gap between 
their mobile device operating system and their desktop or workstation uh, device operating system and there's some really cool stuff that they're doing with the uh, the next generation of the operating system um, to do that integration and I think they're they're making some really cool improvements and uh, I kind of like what where they're going performance is really really good um, prior to having this in a USB drive it was internally on my Mac and it was it was definitely snappy very fast um, application response times were really really quick I haven't had a time uh, a chance to check the new battery life that they're claiming with all these new algorithms um, but I, uh, I definitely see much better performance with Mavericks um, than a base install of Lion, Mountain Lion, my bad. So there you have it. Quick look at Mavericks. Um, once again, thanks for watching the show. Any support that you're willing to give is, is awesome. You can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash geekwithglasses, Twitter, twitter.com slash geekwithglasses. You can find us on Google Plus if you just search for Geek with Glasses or Neil Perrin. Um, you'll find both a personal account and an actual Geek with Glasses uh, page account on Google Plus. Please like, subscribe, retweet, comment, thumbs up, all of those cool things. Um, they definitely help the show. And I want to keep the show going for you. I've got a bunch of new videos coming out. I'm going to do an iOS 7 video. Um, and then I'm going to do an iOS 7 versus iOS 6 on an iPhone 5 video um, and get those out for you guys in the next couple of days. So, um, again, thanks for watching the show. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot and have a good night.